Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus CV Africa. Time for Off the Press. As usual, we'll take you through the pages of the national dailies and have, I guess, drawing to make sense of all of the stories. We do have Chris Wandu on standby. It's good to have you join us. Chris, good morning and compliment of the season. Good morning, compliments of the season. Merry Christmas and a happy new year in advance. Many thanks. All right, let's start off with the Punch newspaper this morning, and uh, we'll be looking at uh, some of the big stories on the Punch. The banner caption reads, Federal Government Plans 12 Trillion Naira Fresh Borrowing, Public Debt to Hit 50 Trillion Naira by 2023. Government's Borrowing Plan focuses on domestic bonds and concessional external loans. Go after wealthy Nigerians owing the country instead of borrowing. Uh, this is what you have experts saying. Assets must be created to justify debt. Infrastructure needs essential, says analyst. Now, you also have another caption saying, 15 states conducting contact tracing. 1,986 travelers test positive for COVID-19. And NCDC is quoted on that. Currency in circulation jumps again, hits 5.15 trillion naira. Electoral Act, National Assembly concerned with lawmakers. Politi political interest, says Malami. Uh, National Assembly concerned with lawmakers. Political interest, says Malami. And uh, just before we move away, there are quite interesting headlines here. We will continue our resolve to make Ogun oil producing state. Abiodun is quoted on that. And we're tired of crying, pleading with Buhari over Lea Shaibu. Uh, this is what parents, uh, parents are saying. But, you know, for me, the question is, do we still have um, Lea Shaibu alive? I mean, is, is she really alive? Is she dead? I, I really don't have answers to that, and I'm hoping that, you know, we can get answers. And I'm sure that the question that the parents are asking might not also be different from all of that. But this is some of the headlines we're taking on the Punch newspaper this morning. And now on the Nigerian Tribune, big story there, convention, APC stakeholders move against Buni Committee, plan January 11 uh, summit. Group threatens mass protest over tenure elongation. Uh, FI, uh, FRSC confirms 11 burnt in Anambra Boxing Day accident. Also many injured as bus loaded with passengers plunges into Lagos Canal. Buhari remains, uh, Buhari's remaining 17 months enough to solve Nigeria's security problems, says the presidency. Says this swap rockets meant to scare presidents from Borno visit. Bandits abduct 34 women and others in Zamfara. Electoral Act, why Buhari will not sign, and that's from Malami. Disagreement between Dangote and Amosun government caused the loss of 16 billion naira refinery to Lagos, says Abiodun. And uh, I think we can share just a few more on the Tribune. Passport scarcity affecting 1.5 million Nigerians in Italy. And um, police arrest illegal rich kids uh, uh, car racers in pound 21 cars in Abuja. Those are the stories on the Tribune. Away from the Tribune, let's check out the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. Gunmen kidnap 20 women in Zamfara and troops kill seven terrorists in Yobe. Foil ESWAP attack at Special Forces School. 17 months enough to end insecurity. President is quoted. I mean, these are the riders underneath the board caption. Please free Okorocha's son-in-law as Imo government can. Bishop condemn church invasion. Anglican Bishop slams Buhari for not signing electoral bill. Abga mocks Anduba. And you also have passport scarcity affecting 1.5 million Nigerians in Italy. Desmond Tutu for burial January the 1st. And uh, Yoruba groups unveil app to cop kidnappings or kidnapping in the southwest. Omicron, Nigeria records 1,000. 547 infections. Uh, that's really scary, if you ask me. Again, APC hits a door government over alleged plot to convert Central Hospital, Beni to pa Motopark. Uh, that's also another 
a headline on the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. That's so much we can take at this point in time. I'll quickly mention that, you know, the figures concerning COVID-19, you, know, you know, it still doesn't seem like Nigeria is testing enough, actually. And so we maybe are just reporting people who report, you know, themselves sick in the hospitals. Um, not necessarily, you know, uh, figures from massive testing across the country. So we, we really may not even have a so, clear so, picture so the, of how So there might just be cases, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, definitely. You know, it should be a lot worse. On the Daily Independent this morning, low capacity, COVID-19, curb aviation performance in 2021. Additional 30 aircraft expected in 2022. Uche Wonsu's arrest, uh, merited predicament, uh, says the APC. Also, COVID-19 Omicron, Nigeria may witness increased hospital hospitalizations and deaths, experts warn. Say Omicron variant cases underreported, like I just mentioned. Thugs violently disrupt PDP Congress in Zamfara. And also, Zulum to social media promoters, stop comparing my work with other governors. Bandits attack Zamfara communities, kidnap 33 women. And um, past administration looted funds for fight against terrorism. I'm not sure who that is from now. Um, but those are the stories we can share on the Daily Independent. All right. Um, good morning once again to Chris Wandu. Thanks for joining us. I'm not sure which of the stories you, you like to pick up from. Once again, uh, I want to start with the uh, cover of the punch newspaper on Boeing. And um, uh, this is becoming... Uh, Boring to many. Uh, we uh, shattered and shattered our voice outside and uh, see the government is uh, bent at going ahead with this boring uh, scheme. And uh, we don't know where everybody is going to be able to have uh, uh, our public debt eating about 50 trillion. That presently, I think we are, uh, we are hoping between 30 or 35 uh, trillion. Now, uh, by 2023, we are looking at 50 trillion. I just think to ask who is going to pay this debt. These are just being accumulated for generations yet to come. And this current administration has barely 17 months to leave office. And there is no uh, strategic plan on how to pay by this debt. These are debts that we are already, uh, our external debts, we are completely um, cleaned out by the administration of. Uh, uh, former president, Michelle of Hassan just was leaving office, and uh, we had a clean bill of health. But now uh, we are accumulating debt as if uh, it's coming out of fashion. And the question I continue to ask, and I say it clearly that there's nothing wrong in uh, any country borrowing, even the United States of America, as big as they are, one of the biggest economy in the world, still borrows. But ours, what do we use the ones we borrow? What do we use it for? Do we use it for infrastructure or just for? Uh, uh, for just jamborees. And we're going to look at at a point that our uh, debt servicing was hitting at close to about 90%. And that in itself was so bad. So um, <laughs> I don't know where we're going, who's going to help us out of the situation we are currently. And the government has told us that there's nothing wrong in borrowing and that it will continue to borrow. The National Assembly, which is supposed to be a kind of guy, was supposed to be a bridge between the citizens. And the government also had decided to go the way of the government and said that whatever the president bring, they will approve. So we are left between the deep sea and the devil, and that is why we find ourselves at present. But it is quite unfortunate that we cannot be created enough. Yes, we know that there have been, uh, there have been serious economic breakdown, there have been uh, uh, crisis with the COVID 19, there have been the issue of the prices of um, um, oil, deep mean, and the rest of them. But that does not mean that every single thing we need to do, we have to go going. We are owing China, we are owing the US, we are owing United Kingdom, we are owing so many countries of the world. And you say your list goes that he who goes are going, goes are sorry. And that's the situation we find ourselves. I find it important to see that we cannot be as creative as we can to be able to create wealth within the country. And look at it. <laughs> the rate of employment is so high that <laughs> at a point we are designated as the poverty. Uh, uh, capital of the world and nothing seems to be working. I, I don't know where we're going to get out of this. I just hope that the government will not put us in a dead situation that will make it very difficult for Nigeria to be able to live after they must have left in 2023. Okay. Um, there's also a story on the um, Nigerian Tribune that I thought was interesting, and that is um, the one that says Buhari's remaining 17 months are enough 
to solve Nigeria's security problems, and that's from the presidency. Um, do you agree? He has six years to do it. What it wouldn't be in six days? What, how can he solve it in, in 17 months? I don't know how they're going to do it. Don't forget, um, the president last week said that uh, he's on the last phase of uh, we are in the last phase of insurgency in Nigeria. So, and I continue to ask which was the first, which, which was the second, and how did they come about the last phase? In 2015, we are told that what we had was the last kick of the dying horse or dying camel or whatever they called it. I'm sure you still remember that <laughs> that camel and horse is still kick and never die. Then we are later told that. Oh, that uh, what they are targeting is soft targets now that everything will come into uh, fusion. I'm sure you had that too. Then, as it were, uh, we are going, we are now told again, they came up with the antics again that, oh, we are now more secure than we are. We have had it. I'm sure you had that too. So, there have been so many rhetorics here and there. Every now and then, the government trying to push uh, the narrative, trying to give a, a sense of security, trying to give a. Is, initially, they said we don't have enough. Meant. We had about 12 Tucano, um, uh, Tucanos that were purchased by the federal government. What have we done with that? They said we didn't have arms. They have arms. We said that like, the problem was with the service chief that they were not up, up and doing. We served the service chiefs. We said the problem was the IGP, the Inspector General of Police. Let's start inside the IGP. Nothing since that. And the president on a daily basis continue to give marching orders to security agencies. Invite the security chiefs of Abuja. They sit down for one hour, two hours, sitting down, having a uh, security meeting. All of them come out smiling. They don't show the seriousness. They don't even seem to perceive the seriousness of the issues as it were. On a daily basis, people have been kidnapped along the Abuja Kaduna um, uh, Expressway. On a daily basis, uh, uh, people were killed and mourned in their vehicles in, uh, in Sokoto over uh, 25 or 45. On a daily basis, people are killed in Kaduna. He moved to Zampara is a no-go area, Onu is a no-go area. All parts of the north, and every part of Nigeria is not secure. And you have told me those that uh, this will be secure. Well, let's see the magic wand. But to me, the box is up on the table of the president, as I say, every time is the commander in chief of the armed forces. The governors will tell you that they are they are uh, they don't have much to do because they don't have any control over security agencies. But I cannot leave it squarely on the uh, table of the federal government. I think it's a joint effort. By both, there should be a joint effort between the government in the state and the federal government so that we can be able to get this problem just behind us. This is a ragtag. At the point, don't forget also they call it a ragtag uh, um, uh, miscreant. From bandit, we have moved to terrorist. Now, I don't know what to measure. And I continue to say that we will continue to go on this route until we learn to start prosecuting those that have been or, uh, fingered, or those that have been arrested for issue of terrorism across Nigeria. We are treating this with key gloves, and once we continue to treat that, and that is what we get, I continue to also say that the body language of the president is not helping matters at all. I don't know why he's doing that. Uh, well, but a situation where people just go randomly and continue to kidnap people and keep people at will without any recourse to anybody prosecuting them, this is what is spoiling this. And the AGF have come out separately. The federal government have come separately to say that they will name those behind it. We saw what happened in UAE. So people were named to have been financing Boko Haram. And within the days, they were rounded up, prosecuted, and jailed. Charge went as far as getting most during the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the last regime, or the regime of the last president that died. He rounded most of them up, got them jailed. Those that were eliminated, we are sentenced to death and eliminated. That is how to go about it. But the way we are going about we are treated with the, the kid gun. Mr. Wandu, um, just to, you know, briefly so we can also move something else, but I, I want you to also, you know, speak on this. Same topic. Um, does statements or do statements like these really just show that the government doesn't even know exactly what is required to truly end the insecurity challenges in the country? Um, or they're you know, really just making statements, you know, to appeal to Nigerians? Because you know, if, if, if you ask if you ask the questions about what really are required, it's it's more than just military um, actions. It's more than just funding the military better. There's a lot you know that has to go into education, into poverty, into you know our borders, you know that have continued to be porous. There's so much that needs to be done, um, and they they don't seem to really understand those aspects, besides the military aspect of it. So does a statement like this really just tell you that they don't seem to understand the problem? Or they do, and they really are just throwing out words. 
They are both. One, they've lost all initiative, and that's what I can say, because they've tried everything in the books, and within the past six years, obviously, they're not able to get it right. Then also, I still believe that they know what needs to be done. But as rightly said, it's not just about military action. There is also what is called intelligence gathering. Every security agents across the globe now think more on intelligence gathering and have some level of connectivity with the citizens. Once we're able to win the, the, the confidence of the citizens, that it, much, it makes it much easier for you to be able to um, reconcile it and be able to, uh, to go against um, after those behind this. But there's a big disconnect between the citizens and even the security agents where people are not able to give the military the necessary information to be able to operate because there's a disconnect and distort between the citizens and, and the military because they also believe that some of this information they pass to the security agents get back to this um, bandit and they use it against them. So it, it, it is a very, very big challenge. Yes, military hardware, yet yeah, they have it. Um, soldiers will have it. But if you don't do more than that, then because I'm not one of the, of the school of thought that it is uh, because of uh, uh, poverty here and there. Nigeria is not the only country that is in poverty. There are so many countries. No, but that about um, 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 I mean, Chris Wandu, uh, you we can't take out the fact that poverty and all of the crimes and criminality that we're faced with uh, don't work. I mean, hand in hand, and you want to say they are cousins. Poverty and crime, there's a strong correlation. I mean, you would want to see the rate of unemployment. People want to survive. The survival is not an excuse, though, but just to say that, I mean, we can't take out the fact that being a poor country is also contributing to all of the crimes and criminality that we're faced with. But, um, you know, um, we're still talking about security now. Looking at the Sun, the Daily Sun newspaper, I don't know if um, this would be like a good news for us and maybe the, the entire country can actually you know, imbibe this one. Yoruba groups unveil apps to curb kidnapping in the Southwest. Uh, what do you make of this innovation? Let me repeat myself. Poverty, insecurity cannot be blamed only on poverty. And I repeat that. Nigeria is not the only country that, is talking about, that has poverty. across. So, we are so many countries in Africa that are far, far better than. Yes, poverty is an issue. Unemployment is an issue. Ability for people to be able to go about their businesses without necessarily being able to feed themselves is a, a problem. But if you look at the rates of um, um, insecurity, you also look at some other factors. We are talking of education. He mentioned education, totally agree When you look at the ratio, the education ratio by ratio of education in the South and that of the North, you come to realize that's a big problem in the North. Look at the issue of a majority system in the north. It's causing a lot of problems. I've always been saying that that is a time bomb waiting to explode. Children on daily basis are just pushed out to go and be begging and rest of them. And anybody can be able to capitalize on such, uh, on such, which is also power, as you said, and be able to indoctrinate them and get them fixed into the system. And that in itself is a big issue. So it is it, 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 a total mix for me. But back to the issue of app that you talked about. Oh, well and good. I don't know how the app works. But if I can say that app, the app can be used to be able to track the issue of kidnapping and rest, all well and good. But I still believe that the state government, especially the Southwest, are doing enough. Um, you look at what they've done with their Moteku security system, and it's working in the South, South, uh, Southwest. The South is several times they've talked about Ibubago. For years now, nobody's doing anything. I just saw the uh, uh, boy state governor a few weeks um, by last week or there about saying he's launching his own security outreach, which is an arm of people. Bagu. How that is going to solve the security problem in boy states, I don't know. But it has to be a collective, it's not just a state by state thing in the southeast. What the southwest did was come together and have a joint patrol team known as Amotec. If the south is going to do something like that, then it has to be joint, but not just individually launching their own thing. Then South South is literally doing well. But the north and the south is seems to be the bedrock of high level of insecurity now. And the federal government needs to do something about it. our security agencies. A lot of people didn't travel this Christmas because of the height of the insecurity across the land. They rather remain where they are because they don't know whether they will actually get to where they are going to. Or even if they get there, they will come back safely. Okay. Uh, quickly also speak um, on the situation, well, the, the Imo state uh, arrest. Uh, situation where Uche Mwosu was arrested in church on Sunday. 
Um, reports have it that he has been released, but it's on the Daily Independent this morning. It says Uchewosu's arrest merited uh, predicament. Um, it says release uh, release um, uh, release Uosu says he w released Uosu. I beg your pardon. Says he wasn't invited before arrest. Uh, share your thoughts on on what might be happening over there. The bizarre manner with which Uchi Uosu was uh, arrested is what was making the rounds, and a lot of Nigerians have condemned that act. You can't just walk into a, a, a church and try it, um, decide to abduct. I call it abduction. That that was not an arrest. And I continue to ask, if not for the social media, I wonder what would have happened. If that abduction or arrest, whatever you call it, was not captured on um, cameras and social media, I wonder what would happen. Because the way Amana it was done looks like kidnapping. And the question we've always asked, there are procedures for arresting of in Nigeria, irrespective of how, how political correct it is or not. It, it, it has to be invited. If it, if it's to be, if it's to honor that invitation, if he fails to honor that invitation, a warrant of arrest will be issued. I don't think that was because even the uh, statement issued by the Commission of Police does not state that he was invited and refused to um, honor that invitation. Uh, he was he has been released according to uh, according to report. But even the, the Imo State government have come out to apologize to the church on the way and manner he was arrested. I don't think that is the route to go. There are better way of doing. We are in a civilized country, and we don't tend to be behaving as if. We are in a banana, a banana republic. If he has questions to answer, that procedure that should have led to his being uh, invited and if he refused arrest, then you issue a warrant of arrest. That will even be publicized. So that whenever you take any action that you do, the people will be with you. But that was not followed. Then you are doing the, la the right thing at the wrong time. It becomes a problem. You arrested him, you handcuffed him, and within 20, less than 24 hours, you released him. Then the, what is the all that show all about? To me, that was that was wrong, and uh, I think we should start uh, behaving as a civilized society. What is not happening in my state? Many that thing came out. So many things came up. We saw the how it went all over social media. He has been kidnapped. There was panic everywhere. Even those within him state, a lot of people went to their their places in my hometown. People went back to went back home, and the rest of them. The news went around so badly that every there was tension everywhere. It's not supposed to be that way, and it's not, that's not the way to go about it. Okay, um, let's also look at another uh, caption here on the Punch newspaper. Nigeria Varsity ranks very low because of poor lecturers to student ratio. Or uh, that's what a former vice chancellor is quoted to say. Well, we have always been going uh, on that low ranking for long. At the point, I don't think that any Nigerian university was able to make the, the first 1,000 um, in ranking of the university. And the, the reasons are many. Don't forget that most of our universities, especially the federal and the state universities, they are supposed to be the pioneer of academic excellence. In the last few years, I've faced a lot of challenges. Also, at a point, also went to strike for over one year. Students were at home. Then, uh, what were they fighting for? They apart from their own personal interest, which is uh, salary and stuff. They also try to fight for the end of the university system, where they think that the facilities are not good enough for learning. And we continue to have the state universities. Uh, you have private universities and the rest of them. What we are having more is more now of quantity than quality. And you continue to ask yourself, why do we find ourselves in this situation? And this reason, the main reason is I, I have always said is because our leaders don't find the universities or higher institutions here good enough for their children. All their children are schooling abroad in various universities across the globe. So when you're talking of poor, uh, poor, uh, poor, uh, poor quality, uh, education in the university system, you see that it doesn't consign them. All of them, you have that, you see on a daily basis how they go to United Kingdom, they, how they go to US for the graduation of their children, and they pose and, and uh, post pictures of those. I have said it down with that number that until we start making our public officers accountable to Nigeria, this is, will continue to face it. It should be, we should have it within the system that any public officer that's taking up position in Nigeria must make sure that his or her child is in, in Nigerian schools. I don't care whether it's private or um, uh, public, but they must be in Nigeria. So that when we are talking about a problem within the education system, they will feel it. Better as it's now, they don't. All of them, even the, the children of the president, did you see that all of them school abroad? We saw uh, about one or two of them that graduated, but it was abroad. So what do we expect? So until we're able to do the needful, 
quality of education and we continue to build. And that is why most often than not, you see that most of the um, uh, certificate that we put there, we, we give out here. When you go abroad, we have been asked to take certain examination and the rest of them for you to be to fit in two of those universities across the globe, which is to me is not good enough. All right. Chris Wandu, um, as always, Tuesday is a very interesting with you. Thank you very much for uh, joining us and for spending uh, uh, your time with us this morning. Wish you a very interesting day. Thank you, Thank you very much, for me. I do have a uh, happy new year in advance. Thank you. All right, and uh, that's where we wrap up off the press this morning. Thank you for staying with us. Very interesting stories, uh, you know, on the papers this morning, especially the one on insecurity uh, and, of course, uh, in the emo state and a couple other things. We'll take a short break and sh share with you a little bit of history. When we come back, our first major conversation for today will be kicking off. Stay with us.